Everyone knows 90s kid Sonic the Hedgehog, right? He's the blue speedster created by Sega to combat Mario. He started out as a way past cool dude, but Time to crack that Eggman wide open. Yeah, let's party. entered an awkward phase in the early thousands and never really got over it. It's okay though. If anything, he is a lovable dork now and has amassed a large fan base full of all kinds of people. Since his debut, he has grown a large franchise that includes games, TV shows, comics, movies, and more. Occasionally dipping his toe in some more unusual venture. Oh god, that looks nasty. <laughs> Give me a sec. Okay, I'm good. Anyway, I want to take a look at something that I'm a bit of a fan of. Lost Media. Now, I'm not a Lost Media channel or anything, but there is a bit of an overlap with this particular story and some retro Sonic media that I enjoy. It starts way back in 96 in Japan with the two-episode Sonic the Hedgehog OVA, produced by Studio Perot. OVA meaning Original Video Animation. OVAs are direct-to-video anime releases, sort of like those old Disney sequels released straight to video or DVD, except I don't dislike all the OVA releases. Well, Return of Jafar was okay, I suppose. The first episode of the OVA is called Welcome to Eggman Land, and the second, Sonic vs. Metal Sonic. Before you start thinking these are the lost media, they aren't. Actually, both these episodes were stitched together and released as a single movie in 1999 by ADV Films. It was ever so creatively called Sonic the Hedgehog, the movie. But considering the recent release of the live-action Sonic the Hedgehog movie, I will just call this the Sonic OVA for the rest of the video. Before moving on to the Lost Media story, let's take a small look at the Sonic OVA itself. It is a combination made in heaven. Classic Sonic the Hedgehog and the goodness of retro anime. You can almost see the 90s oozing off of it. Do you like characters grumbling in a slow build of anger before having an outburst? What about continuous chatter over a couple frames of animation? You fell for my trap! You came all the way here and now you'll die here! Good job, Sonny! Oh, and we can't forget about calling out perverts. Yeah, it's all here, along with a cat girl. Because why not? The Sonic OVA has a lot of quirks, particularly when you watch the English dub, which is my preferred viewing method. Yeah, sometimes I prefer dubs over subs. It depends on how I feel. The dub for this OVA has the cheesiness you will find in earlier anime dubs, back when dubbing of anime was a little more unrefined. What business are you talking about, Biko? We two only just met. We didn't just meet. You and I began at the same kindergarten and Siko was there too. And you ended up getting some, uh, interesting choices for voices. I don't know why they went with this direction for Sonic, but he talks like he is from a 1950s serial. Everybody stand back! Nobody try to help me! I have to destroy this imposter! I was only pretending to be vulnerable. I was sure I'd be brought here. What you thought was my weakness turned out to be your undoing. Julia White voiced Sonic in every other speaking role until this release. I miss my Breezy. I miss her a lot. But it makes me queasy, cause she's a robot! I feel like the voice actor in this, Martin Burr, was trying to imitate him. Tails sounds kind of like he has a stuffy nose. I think I like listening to him the least. This is bad! With my tail stuck together, I can't fly! And Knuckles, well... Now I'm stuck! Something's moving in there! He wears a hat. The plot for the Sonic OVA is simple. Eggman, or Robotnik if you prefer, lures Sonic and friends into a trap by holding the president's daughter Sarah hostage. He then unleashes his ultimate creation, Hyper Metal Sonic, upon the blue blur. While Sonic fights his robotic replica, You might know everything I'm going to do, but that's not going to help you since I know everything you're going to do. Strange, isn't it? Eggman plans to destroy the floating continents above the planet Freedom, called the Land of the Sky. And then, marry the cat girl that is of questionable age. I couldn't find a canon age for Sarah, so I'm going to trust that Eggman is on the up and up with this one. Pretty young Sarah. <laughs> Help me, Daddy! The OVA fittingly moves a mile a minute, but isn't exhausting, and makes for a fun and chaotic watch. <laughs> Tails, get off! I'm so sorry. 
I never thought you'd stoop that low. <laughs> the music, composed by Mitsuhiro Tada, is top tier. It's full of great beats and captivating synths. I have chills. He also arranged Lookalike, the ending theme of the Sonic OVA. Ryu Konaka wrote and performed the lyrics. It's a real banger and very thematically appropriate considering Sonic literally fights his doppelganger. Sorry, Shadow. Metal did it first. Damn you! No! It's not true! The song is performed in English, and young me thought it was added in in the dub. You know, the same way four kids used to add in English songs at the end of their Pokemon and Yu-Gi-Oh. Do you remember those things? Well, Lookalike is a little catchier in my opinion. Wait, up, Knuckles! Wait a second. What? Wait up, Knuckles! I can't hear the song over them talking. Shut up, Dale! <sighs> Maybe the original Japanese version of the OVA has less dialogue. Nope. Okay then. I think the song said a long time ago, but I can't make out the rest. I could just be mishearing this line. They sound pretty similar, but it's not just me who heard a long time ago. Many people online heard the same thing. Also, this clip is from the credit sequence used in the second episode of the OVA the same credit sequence used in the ADV release. There, the song is played from start to finish without interruption. With this in mind, it would be only natural to think that you were mishearing things rather than assume there were more lyrics to the song. But this is actually where the problem starts to come to light. If you listen to the song play out during the first episode's ending, you can hear completely different lyrics. That meant there was definitely more than the 1 minute and 46 seconds of song from the second episode credit sequence. That also meant Sonic, Tails, and Knuckles were making a small section of the song impossible to understand. Thanks, guys. Overseas fans would be none the wiser to the extent of the lyrical differences. When this was released in 1999, it would have been even easier to believe that you were mishearing things because the ADV release removed the first credit sequence. At this point here, it fades into the start of the second episode. Otherwise, it wouldn't play like a movie. Though, there is still a small taste of some of the extra bits of the song before it fades out. When I was a kid, I didn't know and thought the whole song was in the movie. I did think I was mishearing things the first instance it played in the movie as well. Perhaps a release of the song could clear up some of this confusion. A decade later, in 2009, Lookalike was released for the first time. It was featured as a bonus track on True Colors, The Best of Sonic the Hedgehog, Part 2. The follow-up to the 2008 album, True Blue, The Best of Sonic the Hedgehog, both by Wavemaster Entertainment. No longer did people need to fire up the Sonic OVA to treat themselves to a little look-alike. These two albums were compilations filled with popular Sonic tunes from the video games. Look-alike was the only non-video game song. Such a rebel. Unfortunately, the release of this song was not the full version. You can clearly see on the booklet insert that is just the short mix. It was the same one that played at the end of episode 2 and in the ADV release. Also, it was the first time any song from the Sonic OVA had been available for purchase. Apparently, the OVA was not popular enough for a commercial release of the soundtrack. You're telling me this wasn't popular enough? He forced me to put on these clothes and then flew away without saying anything. Many wondered if the song would ever see a full release. Others wondered what our loudmouthed heroes were hiding. But one member of the Sonic community felt it was time to deal with the mystery. Illuminor, a user of Russian social media VK and translator, was more than familiar with the situation and took it upon themselves to get a copy of the official lyrics. They reached out to a person who worked on the Sonic OVA in hopes they could offer some insight. I can only imagine how the conversation between them might have gone. Hmm, it probably didn't go quite like that. 
though in a surprising and wonderful twist. The contactee, who was going to remain anonymous because everything I researched insisted they do, went above and beyond. Rather than sending the lyrics, they sent the holy grail, the full version of the song Lookalike. In the year 2020, 24 years after the release of the original OVA, the mystery was at its end and everyone could know what was missing. It makes sense when you hear the whole song, which I have linked below, because once Illuminar obtained it, they quickly shared it with the world. The Sonic and All Characters account, on then Twitter, announced the news of the discovery and linked to the video of the full song, uploaded by Mefaresu. Uh, sorry if I butchered that name. The video uploaded clocks in at 4 minutes and 18 seconds, more than double the 1 minute and 46 seconds of the release from 2009. The Sonic OVA is certainly a fun and interesting piece of Sonic history. It may not be one of those lost media stories with drama and twists and turns at every step of the way, but it is ultimately one with a happy and satisfying ending. It's interesting to see that the song partially lost for over two decades was fully uncovered due to a member of the Sonic community reaching out for answers. Sometimes that's all it takes. I am glad that Illuminor took action and everyone can enjoy a piece of media thought lost. I want to thank you for watching this far. If you enjoyed watching this, please consider liking, subscribing, or leaving a comment. Also, did you notice my new animated background? It's actually still in the works, but I want to post my progress as I go so that you viewers can see the changes as they happen. I'm also currently working on improving my character emotes, you know, so that more than just my face changes. I don't know when those will be ready, but I will try and make it sooner rather than later. Anyway. Thanks for stopping by, and I hope to see you again at the Rerun Lounge.